Hi, and welcome to our first workshop on identifying insects. My name's Jenny, and today I'll be talking uh, about the major insect orders and how to identify them. In this talk, I'm going to cover uh, insects and their relatives, the other arthropods, the general insect body plan and how it can be used to identify insects and their lifestyles, why insects rule the world, as well as some facts about insect anatomy and their biology. Insects belong to a larger invertebrate group, or phylum, called the arthropoda. Arthropods are numerous and diverse and contain a lot of organisms that you're probably familiar with. Insects, of course, include animals like beetles, flies, moths and butterflies, earwigs, aphids, and dragonflies, as well as many others. But arthropods also include arachnids, like spiders, ticks, mites, and scorpions, crustaceans, such as crayfish, lobsters, and crabs, as well as other animals like centipedes and millipedes. Some of the features that all tie these groups together and make them arthropods um, are that they have an exoskeleton, which is like a hard outer shell, as well as jointed appendages and a segmented body. Some animals, like slugs, snails, and earthworms, are invertebrates, but they're not arthropods because they don't have this hard exoskeleton or segmented body plan like um, insects and the rest of the arthropods do. Here are four ways to tell the difference between an insect and an arachnid that you can use to identify a cool critter you find outside. Insects have three body regions, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, whereas arachnids, like spiders, only have two. Insects also have one pair of an antennae, three pairs of legs, and two pairs of wings, whereas spiders and other arachnids have no antennae, four pa pairs of legs, and no wings, thankfully. The insect body plan can be divided into three main regions. The head, containing the antenna, eyes, and mouth parts. The thorax, that has the legs and wings. And finally, the abdomen that contains a large portion of the digestive system and the reproductive organs. Some of the important areas to study and identify common insect orders that I'll talk about next include the wings, the legs, the mouth parts, and the antenna. The mouth parts of insects are important for two main reasons. First, they can help us identify uh, what the insects are. And second, they tell us about how the insects feed on a plant and what sort of damage they can cause. The function of the mouth parts is to taste the environment, locate food, and to get food into the digestive system of the insects, just like our mouth does. For instance, Insects with sucking mouth parts tend to use them like a sort of straw or hypodermic needle. All flies have sucking mouth parts and mosquitoes are a great example of insects that use sucking mouth parts like a straw to suck up our blood. Other insects are predatory and use these mouth parts when feeding on prey. House flies also have sucking mouth parts, but theirs are modified a bit so they sort of sponge up food, usually after regurgitating it to start the digestion process a bit early. On plants, insects with sucking mouth parts suck up the plant sap and tend to leave discoloration on the leaves. Many of the more, the more serious plant pests have sucking mouth parts. Moths and butterflies are interesting because they change mouth part types during metamorphosis. They start out with chewing mouth parts as caterpillars, leaving holes in leaves or cutting stems. Then as adults, they have sucking or siphoning mouth parts and suck up nectar from flowers. Other groups of insects have chewing mouth parts, such as wasps and bees, beetles, praying mantises, and grasshopper group. 
These insects chew on their food in a similar manner as you and I do. Honeybees have a lapping, tongue-like mouth part they use to collect nectar. The legs of many insects have changed or modifi been modified to be especially useful in the habitat where the insect lives or for helping it obtain food. Walking legs are the least modified of insect legs and are used for walking or running. The praying mantis gets its name from its front legs, which make it appear as though the insect is praying. The insect's front legs are actually modified to grab and hold on to the prey that it eats. Many bees have a special part on their legs that they use to carry pollen collected from flowers. Insects that live underground often have legs modified for digging, like this mole cricket does. Most of us were familiar with legs modified for jumping. Jumping is an effective way for insects, like the grasshopper, to escape predators and move quickly through their environment. Many insects also live underwater, like this giant water bug. And these insects have legs modified for swimming. The wings are one of the main features that allow us to categorize different types of insects. This is important because often we can tell a lot about the insect and if it, it's damaging to plants just by knowing what major group it falls in. Beetles have four wings, but the first pair of wings is hardened in order to protect the second pair of wings folded beneath it. It is the second pair of wings that are used for flight. True bugs have wings that are folded across each other to make an X shape. Grasshoppers have leathery front wings and more membranous hind wings. Earwigs have wings folded up underneath the small leathery forewings, but do not fly much. Wasps and bees have two pairs of wings that sometimes are hooked together, so it appears that they only have one pair. Their wings are often clear with darker veins. Butterflies and moths are of course well known for their two pairs of bright and colorful wings. Flies actually only have one pair of wings, ironically, as the hind pair of wings has been reduced. The antennae of insects are very important organs. Most insects rely on antennae to sense their environment. You can think of the antennae as functioning similarly to the human sense of smell, although insect antennae are much better at smelling than we are. Insects also use their antenna to physically feel their environment by touching objects they are exploring. Antennae be come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and are an important feature for identifying insects. Look at the five groups below and look at how different the antennae are for each of these organisms. Why are insects so successful? Meaning, why are there so many types of insects and why are they so abundant? Many theories exist as to why insects are successful. One is that insects are small in size and this allows them to take advantage of many niches or suitable living spaces in the environment. Another is that insects have many generations in short time periods, allowing improved chances for mutation that create new species. Insects also undergo a unique metamorphosis that allows adult and immature insects to take advantage of different food sources and niches in the environment. That way, the adults aren't competing with their kids for food. All of these things allow insects to eat a wide variety of foods and live in many different habitats throughout the world. Here's a quick quiz to see if you can tell the difference between insects and arachnids. Before I give the answers, you can pause the video if you want more time to figure out which is which. This first one is the beetle, so yes, an insect. Here we have a scorpion, which is an arachnid. This one's a tricky one. This is actually a caterpillar, so it has a very different body plan from the adult insect, but it's still an insect. 
you probably got this one. This is, of course, a spider, which is an arachnid. Here's another really tricky one. This might just look like a piece of plant material, but it's actually an insect. It's called a scale insect, and you can learn more about them in our workshop four on hemiptera, or true bugs. Finally, we have another insect, another beetle, or a weevil. Now we're gonna cover uh, some of the major groups of insects. First off, we have Odonata, or, which include dragonflies and damselflies. You can ID this group by their long, slender You can identify odonates by their long, slender wings and long, thin body. Dragonfly and damselfly nymphs, or the juveniles, are actually aquatic and live in wetlands and streams. They emerge into the adult dra winged dragonflies. However, both juvenile and adults are extremely predaceous. Next up, we have the Blattodea, or the cockroaches. Their body plan is very flat, with spiky legs and very long antenna. The Asoptera, made up of the Greek words for straight wing, include the grasshoppers and crickets. They, of course, have large back legs modified for jumping. Some of them have visible ovipositors at the hind end which are structures females use to lay their eggs. Their derma the Dermaptera are earwigs. They have long skin-like hind wings folded underneath very short forewings, which gives them their Greek name, skin wing. Perhaps most recognizably, they have pinchers at the end of their abdomen. Hemiptera are also known as true bugs. They include things like cicadas, stink bugs, and aphids, as well as plant hoppers. They have a beak with piercing, sucking mouth parts. The next group are the hemiptera, also known as the true bugs. They include aphids, plant and leaf hoppers, stink bugs, cicadas, and others. They have a beak and piercing sucking mouth parts. Their forewings cover their hind wings, which are usually either half membraned, half thickened, or the wing is all membranous. Coleoptera are the beetles, which get their name from sheath and wing meaning that their hind wings are hidden beneath the elytra, or modified forewing. Beetles have chewing mouth parts that they use to grind up food, and their forewings form a hard shell that cover the hind wings. Flies come from the words two and wing, referring to the fact that they only have two wings, whereas most insects have four. A single pair of wings means that the hind wings have been reduced into a structure called the halter. They have sponging and sucking mouth parts, except mosquitoes and some others that are able to pierce our skin. The hymenoptera include bees, wasps, ants, and sawflies. Their name comes from the Greek god of marriage because the forewing and hindwings are joined together with small hooks. Hymenoptera have chewing mouth parts. They have four membranous wings and their waist is often constricted, meaning that their food has to be either liquid or very well ground up. 
Females have an ovipositor or stinger at the end of the abdomen. Finally, we have the Lepidoptera, which are butterflies and moths. As adults, they have coiling, sucking mouth parts. But as we discussed earlier, the larva or caterpillars have chewing mouth parts. They have four wings that are actually covered in tiny microscopic scales. This is the last group we're talking about, but we have three more workshops that talk in detail about Coleoptera, or beetles, Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths, and Hemiptera, the true bugs. So you can learn more about three of these groups of insects.